Hello, this is Kenny Xue speaking. I'm from Department of Energy Engineering, National United University. In this unit, we're going to talk about the, the electrostructure. The electrostructure many uh, talk about in this unit is for the pen fuel cell, proton exchange membrane fuel cell. Even the, the structure of the electro is for the proton exchange membrane fuel cell. But the basic principle uh, is applicable for many other kind of fuel cell. Uh, in this uh, the electrode structure, we also talk uh, describe uh, the basic uh, process and the related reaction taking place inside the electrode. Let's look at the, the electrode reaction taking place inside the electrode. The electrode and the anode we call or we call the negative electrode. The hydrogen is oxidized, release the electron, and then uh, generate the proton. And on the cathode, or we call the positive electrode, the oxygen was reduced into water by combined with the proton and then the electron. The overall elect electrochemical reaction is hydrogen combined with oxygen and generate the water. In this uh, electrochemical reaction, we had to be maintain the, ba the balance among the species for given electron or the charge balance for given electron or the electron balance between the electron. That means um, the whatever the electron release from the anode should be re uh, received from the cathode. Uh, in general, we wrote that the schematic represent the fuel cell is given by this photo. The hydrogen was diffused and then uh, oxidized and then become a proton and the proton will migrate uh, to the cathode and then uh, combine with the oxygen and then reduce into the water. But if you re really look at the, the electrochemical reaction, the hydrogen is a gas phase and it had to go, go diffuse through the anode. So the anode had to be porous because it had to be conduct the electron through the external circle. The electron cannot be uh, conducted through the air or the hydrogen. It had to go through some conductive solid particle or fiber and then going throughout. So this will be the porous, porous material. It had to be maintained conduct in a gas solid phase and this had to uh, diffuse through the gas phase. For the proton, it had to be conduct in the liquid phase. So that means that on the, uh, the end of electrode structure had to be a porous material and uh, had both gas phase, solid phase and the liquid phase coexist. Even we look at the, the on the cathode uh, reaction also had to be the same situation. The oxygen had to diffuse through the gas phase into the electron. And then the electron had to be conducted through the solid phase into the cathode. And then the, the proton had to be uh, migrated through the liquid phase and then generate the water. The water might be in the liquid phase or the vapor phase, depends on the situation. So the electron itself had to be a uh, porous material and it had the three phase uh, gas, liquid, and the water. Uh, and the solid phase coexist. So we can see the structure um, from here. Um, this will be the bipolar plate with the flow channel. Because the flow, uh, the flow channel dimension is about one millimeter times one millimeter. The bipolar plate is made of a graphite uh, with a resin as a binder. It's a, the main function is to distribute the gas, either the oxygen or the hydrogen evenly to the MEA or the electro surface. But also, it had to be conduct the electron out, in or out, through the, uh, the electron. And um, the oxygen or the hydrogen was diffused through a porous, we call so-called gas diffusion layer.
is made of uh, carbon fiber and resin as a binder. The thickness is somewhere around uh, 300 to 400 micrometer thick. And then it's a porous catalyst layer. It's a uh, made of uh, carbon powder and then the nephew as a binder, also as acting as a proton conductor. The platinum was deposited on the carbon powder as a catalyst. So the electrochemical reaction is taking place at those uh, catalyst layer. The oxygen will be reduced into water and uh, the electron was conducted through the the flow the the flow channel and into the porous electron and to the catalyst layer. And also, the, on the anode side, the, the electron generator was conducted through the catalyst layer to the porous um, the gas diffusion layer and then to the bipolar plate. So this is the basic electrostructure of the pen fuel cell. And um, the nephew membrane is about 30 micrometer. It's a catalyst. A cation exchange membrane. Uh, it can be conducted proton when it's saturated with water. So the um, membrane right now it had to be saturated with water in order to conduct the proton. If the membrane is dry, then it lose the cation exchanging capability. Let's see the structure of MEA. Um, the MEA over the um, for the gas diffusion layer actually is, is made of uh, uh, as we mentioned is a carbon fiber. The carbon fiber over here might be had a binder with resin or epoxy or uh, uh, PTFE, the Teflon. Depends on the um, how what you're going to do uh, the property or hydrophobility of the electron. The porous size is somewhere around 10 micrometer wide, very large porous median. So the gas can diffuse through those porous median. And uh, in a catalyst layer, it's made of the carbon powder here. And then the white spot is a platinum catalyst deposited on the carbon powder. The carbon powder is somewhere around the uh, 50 to 150 nanometer uh, diameter and then the platinum the size of platinum somewhere around the 2 to 5 nanometer um, let's see the elect the actually the for the electro it's not only had a catal catalyst layer or the, and the gas diffusion layer. It also had a microporous layer between those two layers. The thickness of the microporous layer is somewhere around 50 micrometer. The function of the porous layer, microporous layer, is to retard the water generated on the catalyst layer. Try to make the, the gas diffusion layer very dry. The reason is that the oxygen had to diffuse from the flow channel all the way through the gas diffusion layer and to the catalyst layer. If the over the gas diffusion layer was flooded with water, then the diffusion of the oxygen become very, very slow and become very difficult. So the microporous layer, the function of microporous layer is to stop the water, the liquid water uh, diffuse or the flood the gas diffusion layer. So in the castle, the water generate will be defected and then retained in the castle catalyst layer. This also had a beneficial for the membrane over here because it needs water in order to conduct the proton. Even it had a proton conductivity, proton exchange capability. Only the vapor phase water can be diffused through the gas diffusion layer and out. That's the reason why the pen fuser had to be operated at a little bit higher temperature so the water vapor can be evaporated. 
The reason is that we can see for the diffu diffusion rate of the oxygen. It depends on diffusivity and then concentration gradient and the thickness of the diffusion layer. The key is the diffusivity. The water diffusivity, the oxygen diffusivity, uh, the oxygen in the air diffusivity is somewhere in this range. And then the oxygen in the water, then the diffusivity is reduced almost uh, uh, 10 thousandths of the uh, oxygen in air. So that's that's reason uh, we had to keep the gas diffusion layer relative dry. Otherwise, if a flood with water, then oxygen hard uh, diffusion into the catalyst layer become very, very slow. You can see uh, because of that. And that's the uh, one key function for the micropose layer. It's uh, made of uh, about 23% uh, teflon, so it's a uh, high to repel the water, but also can let the gas phase, the vapor, can be uh, go through. Let's uh, keep going. Go to the uh, next level. In this, in the micrometer range. Let's look into the catalyst layer. The catalyst layer is made of catalyst platinum catalyst, the particle size is 2 to 5 nanometer, and then the carbon substrate, somewhere around 50 nanometer to 150. And also, um, it's a, had a nephew binder. The nephew binder is served as the binder to keep the, all the catalysts together, but also uh, it's a protoconducting medium. So the proton able to conduct uh, through this layer, it makes this entire catalyst become hydrophilic. The water actually uh, usually saturated with water. This will make the oxygen diffuse in the catalyst layer become a little bit difficult. As we mentioned, the, the diffusivity of the oxygen in the water is much slower than the oxygen uh, in the water in the air. However, the catalyst layer is only about a 30 micrometer. So that should be uh, uh, ease this problem, the diffusion, diffusion problem. So, and uh, if we look at more detail for a single catalyst, inside for a single catalyst here, the oxygen diffuse onto the catalyst layer and then the proton was migrate migrated through the liquid phase and then combined with the oxygen and then the electron was conducted through the carbon powder and onto the catalyst layer and it, the oxygen will be reduced into the water and this will be diffused out. Um, the what actually the proton uh, migration in the uh, water actually had a hydrogen bond. Usually the, uh, one proton is associated about a 2.5 uh, water molecule. That's why the, the proton um, in the pen fuel cell is need the water in order to uh, the proton able to migrate and transport from the membrane to the catalyst layer. Let's look at actually uh, the the platinum particle is somewhere around the two to five nanometer. So for a particle size like this, actually compose more than fifty uh, platinum atoms inside here. So the uh, the crystal structure of the platinum or the catalyst will be also affect important or will be affected the reaction mechanism of the oxygen reduction. So next slide, we're going to look at more detail into the atomic level of the platinum catalyst. So if we look at the, the platinum catalyst on the, the platinum, what the, it might be had a different crystal structure like a 100, 111, or 110, and many other kind of crystal structure. And on the, inside the platinum 
actually there's no reaction only the the surface platinum will be reacted with the oxygen and that reaction pass or the product will depends on how the oxygen was is adsorbed on the platinum surface it might be had a bridge type adsorption or the end type um, this kind of adsorption then the final product will be make difference for instance if we, the the oxygen was uh, absorbed in this kind of type it very likely may generate a hydrogen peroxide because the hydrogen may be attached to the oxygen atom on this and then the other hydrogen proton may be attached on the other oxygen in this case it um, then uh, before the, they go further the protonation the the, the bonding over here might be released and then they will generate the hydrogen peroxide but if uh, the oxygen was absorbed in this uh, situation the proton might be had a more chance to uh, absorb or react uh, on the out the outmost uh, the oxygen atom rather than inner oxygen atom so this in this adsorption the the product more more or less likely to be the water and then the chemical bond will be uh, uh, cleavage uh, cleave uh, breaking the chemical bond and the general water so the oxygen reaction pass actually had a three different distinct paths the first is it goes through the four electron transfer the oxygen is uh, reduced into the water something like this uh, situation and that also possible is uh, reduced into the uh, hydrogen peroxide like this situation and then the hydrogen peroxide maybe goes through another two electron transfer and uh, reduce further into the water but uh, at the same time the in intermediate product hydrogen peroxide may be uh, chemically decomposed into water and oxygen so if um, so actually the oxygen um, reaction is not as simple as we write as uh, the oxygen uh, reduced into water they might have the uh, intermediate hydrogen peroxide generate depends on the pla the catalyst is a platinum gold palladium or other kind of uh, uh, catalyst and the inside the acid medium or alkaline medium the reaction path will be totally different.